Good evening and welcome back. Today's video is on the conclusion, how to finish the data table and write the conclusion for the concave mirror lab, our convex lens labs. Uh, let's just get right into it. Now, I don't know if you took the time. This might still be blank on yours. I don't know if you took the time to do it. If you double checked your focal length by looking out the window or something, uh, it probably wasn't dead on 20. It was probably more like 19.8 or something. But again, you would have had to double check that. If it's still blank, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Let's move on down though and take a look at the rest of this lab. So this is what your table should look like. And I got these numbers from one of the students. So let's go through and let's figure out how to do these computed cues over there. And we got a bunch of calculations to make, but they're all the exact same. So that's gonna make it kind of easy. So they're, and the calculations are the same for both tables. So that's gonna make it easy. So let's go to a page and let's go ahead and make this my sample calculation page. Of course, like any good lab report, I'm going to put a name and I'm going to go ahead and put a date over here in this corner on this side. All right, so here is my equation. 1 over F equals 1 over P plus 1 over Q. So in this lab, I gave you your F and we're going to use 20, even though that may not be entirely accurate. Uh, if you if you found your F and want to use that number, that's fine. It'd still be very close to 20. But let's see, for our very first trial, we used 45 for a P. So now what I want you to do is to go in and figure out what Q is. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to subtract 1 over 45 from both sides. So I will end up with 1 over 20 minus... 1 over 45. Now you're looking at this and you're like, okay, so the answer is 1 over 36 equals 1 over Q. Mm, no. Well, sort of. It's kind of weird. you got to remember something. This equation does not say Q equals. You found 1 over Q. So if you want to find Q, what you need to do is take the reciprocal. Reciprocal. And I can't spell reciprocal. But anyway, you get the idea. You're going to need to take the reciprocal of this. Now, you've got a ways you can do it. One, you can just know what a reciprocal is. I'll give you a hint. The reciprocal of 1 over 36 is 36 over 1, which means the answer is 36. Okay, Mr. Cole, but what about if we're doing this in our calculator and it gives us weird numbers and it's not so easy to take a reciprocal? Well, that's no big deal. If you're in your calculator, you see this button that says X negative 1 right here. Just mash X negative 1, hit equals, and there's your reciprocal. Hey, well, you know, 1 over 36, the reciprocal is 36. So this is how you get your cues. So I can go all the way through that whole data table. So my first one up here, my first cue should have been 36, which, hey, that ain't too bad. Uh, the whoever did this in lab got 35.5, so they got pretty doggone close. And by the way, I better write 36.0 down at that point. And now you're going to go down the list and do the same thing. So I'm going to go back up here, and so I can do it. So my next one would be 1 over 20 minus 1 over 40. So I'm just going to go back in my calculator. <laughs> 1 over 40 equals... Oh, wow, check that out. 1 over 20 minus 1 over 40 is 1 over 40. So the reciprocal of 1 over 40 uh, is 40. Well, this group's got a little bit off on this one. They've got 40 and 40. Uh, let's see, what's next? Uh, it'd be 1 over 20. I'm just going to go back to my, clear that. Go back to my calculations. So this time it's minus 1 over 30. So 1 over 20 minus 1 over 30 equals 1 over 60. The reciprocal of 1 over 60 is 60.0. Hey, I love these numbers. Is 60.0. They got 53.9, so this one isn't exactly right. But now, now this one's going to be a little weird because this is the one that we couldn't get an answer for in the lab. It would not make an image. Well, let's try that this one out. So, dun, dun, over 15. So let's get our cue for this one. 
negative 1 over 60, which the reciprocal of that is negative 60. So negative 60. Now this should mean something is weird about that one. And that's because this one made what was known as a virtual image. So we weren't able to get an image when we got into that. And we'll talk about that more when we get into the other parts of the lab. Now here's what's neat. If you want to do your computed parts down here, it's the exact same. Like, no, I'm not kidding. Look, it's the exact, well, it's the exact same numbers. <laughs> We're using the exact same numbers, 45, 40, 30, which means my computeds for this other data table are the exact same set of numbers. So that's easy enough. Matter of fact, all our numbers match. The only numbers that are really going to be different for all of us are these last columns, a percent difference. Now, I'm going to go through, and so here's going to be another calculation. So percent difference, I'm going to write my equation, percent difference. This is where we're about to see just how good you did. So E, let's see if I can write this, E2 minus E1, absolute value, so ignore any negatives, over E2 plus E1 divided by 2 times 100. So let's go through and how to do this. And what I want you to do is I want you to do a percent difference between, I want the percent difference between your Q and the calculated Q. And there we go, and the calculated Q. So you should have two Qs. So let's go back to my first one, because it's going to be the same thing over and over. This lab's easy like that. So here you go. Here's what I'm going to do. In other words, this, see if I can get a different color. This column is going to be like my E2. This column is going to be my E1. Now the reality is you could make it backwards, E1 and E2. It doesn't matter. All we're going to do is do a percent difference, though, on these two columns. So my first one is 35.5 and 36. So let me do this at this time, 35.5 and 36. So for me, mine's going to be 35.5 minus 36 absolute values over 35.5 plus 36, should be 36.0, divided by 2 times 100. Now, if you've got a super sexy calculator like my Casio FX115, you can literally type this in there exactly as it looks. So I don't know that you can do absolute values, but anyway, you get the idea. I, I got a feeling you can probably do absolute values in this thing. It's so smart. But anyway, here's what you're going to do, though, if you don't have like a super smart calculator. Just do this. Subtract the difference. What's the top? So what is 35.5 minus 36? Well, that would be negative 0.5, but I'm going to drop the negative and just write 0.5. So subtract the difference. Now, if you look at the bottom, all the bottom is is an average. So all you're doing on the bottom is taking your two numbers, 35.5 plus 36 equals divide by 2 equals 35.75. Look! It should make common sense. It's the average. So all you're doing, all a percent difference is, is the difference divided by the average of the two numbers. And so, no, I need to do one more thing, though, before I forget. When you finish this, times your answer by 100. So for me, this would be 0.5 divided by... 35.75 equals that times 100, SD, 1.39, 1.40 percent. Holy cow. So 1.40, that's an O, percent difference. It's not really a unit on percent difference. It just is what it is. So that means this first one is awesome, a 1.40 percent difference. And that's what we're hoping. We're hoping for less than 5% on all these as we go through here. Hey, you can even do them in your calculator if you want to. That one, you could literally have typed in exactly like it looked. 35.5 minus 36 over 35.5. Oops, hold on. It would be over and over. Over 35.5 plus 36. 
divide by 2, and all of this would be times 100. Let's see if we get the same answer doing it all at once in our calculator. Boom, except it didn't know to remove the absolute value. But anyway, we got the exact same answer. So you're going to do the exact same thing all the way down. So my next one would be 37.2 minus 40 divided by the average of those two times 100, and that would give me that answer. So this is all you do to complete the calculations for this lab. Now, this video is not going to contain everything, but I will go ahead and do this. For the conclusion, for the conclusion on this lab, here's what I want you to do in the conclusion. All right, I want you to, how about this, just tell me about your percent D's. Just tell me how you did in the lab. Did all your percent differences come out really small? Did you have some that came out really big? Uh, I might want you to come back and tell me one more thing in your conclusion. Other than, and, I, and by the way, I'm not just saying list my percent differences. Put it in a paragraph. Give me a little bit of writing here. Uh, give up some color to it. You know what I'm saying? Also, I want you to tell me what happened when your P was less than your F. Now, that looks like a strange statement to be making. What happened when your P is less than your F? I'm talking about what happened when y'all did this one. When y'all did the one where you were got down to 15 centimeters, what happened in that one? I'd like for you to go back and try and answer that question in there. Source of error, that one is, of course, always up to you. So the only other thing, and I'm going to have to do a complete other video, and that's going to be the sketches that go with this lab at this time. But anyway, that's the calculations. Good luck, and God bless. Bye.